So, Martin, DJ Graffiti, tell us a little bit about yourself and also how you're looking for some help today in terms of getting your story right. Right. So you got it right. I am Martin and I am DJ Graffiti. And to me, both of those are one in the same. But my story really centers around me kind of finding myself and realizing that I, I I'm a marketing strategist and then I'm also a DJ. And so for a long time, I've kind of lived a double life where I, I I made a decision in my head that I couldn't be both at the same time because I couldn't really figure out how to make that happen. And my story centers around me bringing those two together and then now kind of feeling fulfilled, fulfilled that I'm able to be Martin Smith and DJ Graffiti. All right, so, but in terms of telling my story, a big part of it is I started out marketing and DJing at the very same time. And that was way back in 1997. All right. I went to business school and finished law school. And so I really loved the marketing and business side of things. But then I also started DJing in college at that very same time. And then my life has kind of flip flopped back and forth throughout the years where I was doing maybe more 80 percent DJing, 20 percent marketing. And then and it got to a point where I was 80 percent marketing and 20 percent DJing. Right. And the reason behind that is a big key point in my story is I got all the way up. I opened up for lots of big name hard artists when it comes to hip hop. Jay Z um, opened up for Eminem, opened for, let's see, Dave Chappelle and Beyonce and J. Cole and Big Sean and Snoop Dogg. And the list kind of goes on. Right. I became the go to person for concerts in the Detroit area. I was named number one DJ in Detroit. And then I got to my, my world tour. And or it actually was a European tour, not necessarily the world, but I uh, went to the Europe tour and I was out for two weeks. And this was the first time I had been, you know, traveling for a two week period. And it wasn't just a one off date where I went and played a show and came home. And after that two weeks, I was like, man, I want to go home. Yeah. Right. This is this is great. This has been <laughs> the most the, some of the best experiences of my life. And I've loved every minute of it, but I'm ready to go home. Right. And every mm. other artist that I knew that got to that plateau in their life was like, I got to get back out on the road. I got to get back yeah, out on the road. Yeah, yeah. But I realized that I just personally wasn't built to just be on the road constantly all the time. It just didn't suit me personally. And so I said, wow, I got to make a change. So that was when I decided to flip and go the other way and have 80 percent be marketing and then 20 percent DJing. And that, yep. that started the double life because I kind of felt that the people who knew me for marketing Right. I didn't want them to know that I was also a DJ. I thought that I would discredit my ability as a marketer. They would see me as this DJ uh, guy who's doing a little bit of marketing. And then on the other yeah. side, at that point in time, corporate was seen as, you know, it wasn't the most cool thing to be be in at that point. Right. And so I didn't really want the people that I was DJing for to know that I had this corporate life. So I kind of <laughs> kept the two separate and I was doing the DJing on nights yep. and weekends and yep. marketing by day. But yep. Over the course of the next 10 years, my life progressed. I became a husband and a dad mm -hmm. and I had some other side business interests. And I just realized like, wow, this is, this is like, it's too much going on. And I'm not really progressing in any one area like I should be because everything is so fragmented. I guess it's time for me to kind of leave DJing alone, right? And the funny part was that after I decided um, that I needed to shift and make marketing my sole focus. S about six months later, that was when I was named best DJ in Detroit. Oh, so I decided really? I'm not <laughs> I'm not going to keep going at this full time. And then I was named best DJ in Detroit. Then when we get up to when I made that next decision to kind of fall back from DJing altogether, it was 2019. And then I sat down with a friend at the top of 2020. <laughs> and this was late February of 2020. And, and, and I was like, I really just can't figure out how to put these two things together. So I, I, I guess I might have to let DJ and go. And he kind of convinced me. He was like, no, everything that you do, you move the crowd. And yeah. that's what I see as the thread running through everything you're doing. And I was like, well, no, actually, I move the needle, right? Because as a DJ... Okay. The, I actually move the needle, not move the crowd. And that was the thread, right? Whether it was growth marketing or whether it was DJing, I was moving the needle for everything. Then the explosion hits when COVID happens because I started DJing virtually. And I found out that from my home studio, I could DJ for people all over the world. And I've now worked with over 40 different enterprise companies, including Amazon and 
Intel and Google and Dell and Nike and Campbell Soup and Calendly <laughs> and GitLab, Cisco. So like I've worked with kind of a who's who list of, of great brands and that's yeah. all happened since 2020. And so at present day, what what's has happened though, is I leaned into virtual so heavily mm. that a lot of my clients don't think I like to DJ in person. Mm. So they went back to in-person events and they're yep. either not thinking of me or yeah. um, okay. they just don't think it's an option. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so yeah. I, I, I don't mind traveling, but I only yeah. want to travel a couple times a month. And so yes. now I'd like to get my clients to buy packages yeah. so that I can just solidify that business and move forward and work with clients that I love. And then also those clients that invest in me, those are the ones that I want to be in person with only yep. a couple times a month. So that's that's kind of the story. There's still a lot more to it, but that's the main thing. And I want to present those that package option to my clients and give them enough of my story that they can see what's going on and buy into it. Yep. Um, well, I tell you, that's I tell where you, we are. Brilliant. Well, I'll tell you what, just from the, the, um, the conversation so far, I'm just going to show you the different, uh, I'm going to show you the different story tactics that immediately jump out to me from this which will allow us to go in kind of uh deeper and deeper and deeper um okay and then we'll uh, but i'm gonna ask you a few questions so the, the stuff i've been underlining in red on there uh, are all the different things which jump out to me from your story so far of ways that we, we can pick on the individual tactics and go deeper and deeper and deeper into particular aspects of your story but before we do that before i get carried away doing that what i also want to do is just check some other things with you which is okay um, okay, how important then is it? So we, I want to go into, and this is basically thinking about, there's two cards which are really useful for me as kind of diagnosis cards as at this stage of the conversation. I kind of think I know where you're going at with one of them. So the first card, which I find really useful, is called Big Small Inside Outside. And it's basically a, a, a way for me to work out what kind of story do you need to tell and where do you need to tell it? And so essentially it goes, I've got the card here, but essentially it goes, um, you can tell stories to the within your team. That's kind of inside the organization. Or you can tell them to people outside. Well, clearly you're trying to tell stories outside because the team, unless I'm wrong, is just you, yes? Yes. And okay. that, that's that's part of the story also. It's like I've tried to add additional members to my team, but mm. I would really rather not be having a, a team so that that's why I want my clients to buy packages, Got it. right? Okay. Because if I want to go the other route and just work with tons of clients, I need then to have to have a manager to take care of this and an admin yep. person yep. to do this and a salesperson to do this and that, yeah, yeah. that, so I don't really want the team. So you're right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're talking about stories told outside. So the next question really is around, are they big stories or small stories? In a way it's a kind of range because your small stories are the kind of, well, it can be, for example, social media can be quite a good place to tell small stories where you're not doing the whole story, but you are doing little snippets of story. Whereas obviously those kind of pitch presentations, yeah, it's a chance to do the, the big story. So it sounds like you've got to get your big story straight. And the, the, the advantage of that is you can then start snipping that big story up into lots of little stories that are consistent. So that you know, okay, so this is why... Um, I talk to people about there's a thread that runs through um, and it's like when you're trying to, it runs through your stories, it runs through your story. So it runs through the things you do for work. It runs through the things you talk about when you talk about your work, but also runs through your kind of personal life. So this, this thread, this golden thread runs through your work and what you do. It kind of also runs through your heart because it's what you feel matters. And that's what connects you, I think, ultimately to your customers as well. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is all interesting is how do you find the thread? So my my first thing think is, okay, well, we've talked about this card, big, small, inside out, and we know that we're gonna be telling big and small stories, but mostly outside. Okay, the other card that's really important here, this uh, diagnosis stage is, is audience profile. And so it's basically about, well, who, are you talking to? And again, you've got a pretty clear idea of this. So you essentially you're talking to the mostly corporate clients. Yes. They're all corporate. So They're yes, all corporates. Part, okay. that was one thing that I didn't say is that going into the pandemic, I chose to focus 
specifically on corporate clients, because that's one of my kind of core differentiators is that I do have the legal background, the marketing background, uh, have done public speaking. And so, and there's not many DJs who focus specifically on corporate. It's kind of looked at as like, you, you might do corporate events, but it's yep. much more cool to be at the club or be at a concert or a festival. And yep. so I'm flipping that and turning it on its head and saying, no, this is the market that I'm so serving yep. and making yep. myself a specialist in that area. Yep. And also, right. Okay. And also, um, you know, there's something about being able to, to go into those conversations and you're kind of speaking the language of the people you're talking to. So you're not purely coming at it from an, from an entertainment. So you could be right. I am an entertainment expert. Well, that's a fantastic thing to be. Um, but you also have another string to your bow. You are also a marketing expert. Um, mm -hmm. So it's interesting. Now, there's, so, so that's useful. You've got a kind of idea of what kind of stories you're telling, what sort of situations, also who you're telling them to. So that's part of the diagnosis stage. Um, you've given me a kind of rundown, if you like, almost like a, a, a lifetime timeline, which is also really useful. Um, that's a really useful thing for me to start thinking of. And what I was doing as you were speaking was I was making little notes of the things that got my attention. Um, so if then what I liken it to, try to find your golden thread. Well, the first thing you're doing is you're just fishing around for lots of threads. It's almost like you've somebody's given you a big bowl of murky soup and there's some string in it and you've got to sort of pull all the string out. Uh, you're looking for all the different threads. And the timeline is a really good way of organizing things in sort of time order. Then what I'm listening for are these kind of little moments where you get a glimpse of gold. Right? And the little moments are, okay, there's something ironic. Okay, there's something unexpected about being both a, an entertainment specialist and a business specialist. Not We don't normally go get those two things together. No reason why they shouldn't, but it's not normal. Um, Okay, so there's something interesting there about, okay, so, and that runs, that is a thread that runs in, you know, from 1997 in business school, studying marketing, but also DJing. Okay, so there's something interesting there. Right from the beginning, it's there. And then you're kind of, it's almost like there you're kind of weaving in and out of that dual identity. So mm -hmm. sometimes you're majoring heavily on on DJing, you're opening for Jay Z and Dave Chappelle and in Detroit, and then sometimes you're 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 running Zoom sessions for Campbell's Soup and Amazon. So you're kind of going in and out of that world. I thought it was interesting, and I was going to ask you the question of, okay, what what's the link between the two worlds? You know, wh how is it? What's giving you strength in both worlds from the way that you operate? And your friend, you mentioned your friend said. You move people, and you said, "No, I move the needle." Mm -hmm. See, I was thinking, well, there was the connection like your friend is the connection that you you move people because music moves people. Oh, you right. Know yeah, mu music is this incredible emotional engineering tool because it lifts people, but mm -hmm. so too, so too is great communication, um, and you know, and coming up with a a, a fantastic plan you go into you know you go into a to talk to a corporate client and they you take them from a place of, of insecurity and uncertainty to a place where they've got a plan you've moved them not just yeah in their headspace you've kind of moved them emotionally as well so there's something interesting but you said no i moved the needle and I thought, that's quite interesting okay so tell me more about why did you say no i moved the needle what did you mean by that well one of the main reasons is just that so in hip-hop the MC is known as the rapper, right? Yep. And so the MC, it it's I don't it's masters of ceremonies, yep. but somebody came up with the phrase MC means move the crowd, oh, right? Okay. And so that's why it's kind of tied to the the other part that you expect out of hip hop is the rapper. So I was like, well, as a DJ, I'm not really an MC. Mm -hmm. I'm the DJ side of it. And yep. so, uh, but, but what I do is with the record needle, I move the needle. Yep. And then from a marketing perspective, my goal was always growing my clients. Yeah, they yep. were always came to me for digital marketing strategy and growth. Yep. Right. And so it was really about yeah, moving yeah. the needle. Yeah, so yeah. as a DJ, so, hmm. when I, when I approach the DJ events, I'm yep. not only looking to, to create a great experience. I feel like that's kind of table stakes. If you yeah, just are yep. coming to play good music, yep. I'm saying, what am I going to do in addition to just providing a party 
And really it's being able to provide measurable impact on top of yep. that. Okay. Right. And so that's, that's my, that's my goal. And I've actually got proof of that. That's part of the presentation. Um, so if I tell you a little bit more about the presentation that yep. I've put together and I can share the screen. Yeah, I'll you, do that. I'll do that in a second. That'd be, helpful, really, that'd but... be really, would be really helpful. Just before we okay. do that, I just want to ask you. Mm -hmm. So, so when I was, if I can just play to you, I'm going to play back to you if I may, before we go look, start looking at your presentation and then we'll mm -hmm. see we'll see if my kind of instincts are, are, are anywhere close to, to yours. Um, so as you were talking through, so listen, that process of going through a timeline, well, that that's actually quite similar to one of the cards in the explore section is called, he says, story listening. Okay. So clearly story listening is what I you know is what I've been doing right now, listening to your story. And the, the, there's interesting thing about this tactic is, well, listen, the first thing you do when you're listening to another person's story is, well, you only talk about stuff that sticks in the memory, right? You don't talk about every day. You don't talk about this morning I got up and brushed my teeth because it's not memorable. So obviously you've you've already filled it out. You've got the kind of memorable highlights. Um, okay, we've worked a kind of basic timeline of what you're trying to achieve as you go through these different stages of your life. Okay, that's the second pass, if you like, at 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 listening to a person's story. Um, okay. I'm interested about now the third pass is, well, what were the key decisions along the way? So what were the moments? And it sounds like you've identified one, and I've I've written down emotional dashboard here. You've identified one key moment on the European or after the European tour where you go, this is not me. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yes. So, so what's going on? So what would be really useful for me in that? to get to that story is okay is there a single moment you can remember and like like i know it's like a a, four, a phone call at four o'clock in the morning because of the time difference back home to your partner and you feel suddenly like oh why am i why am i in this hotel when i could be at home you know is there a single moment you can remember that really crystallized that feeling of oh, what am i doing this for i mean really the moment was just that i wanted to go home Right. right. That's that actually was the moment mm. because well, tell literally you every other artist that I know yep. was like, I've been home. They they were constantly because before I got to that point, I knew other people who were able to travel the world and make a yep. living doing what they did, yeah, you know, yeah. what they loved and so on and so forth. But they were always like, I've been home too long. I got to get back out on the road. <laughs> I've been home too long. I got to okay. get back out on the road. Okay. Right? So tell paint, paint me a picture and see if you can remember this one. So. Is there a moment where, I don't know, you're sitting in a really nice restaurant, having a really nice meal, or you're, or you're, you're living in a moment of what should be the high life, the, the great life for someone who loves all that, you know, the other, all these other artists you're talking about, they love being on the road. And you're in that moment where you should be, you know, you're in the back of a nice car, you're on the way to a venue, you've just come off stage, you know, all those things that should be the trappings of that. And you're actually in that moment thinking, I just want to be at home. See, now that that would be a great story if we could set it up that way. <laughs> Maybe that's the way that I have to tell it. But uh, what is actually, it? What is it? The, yep. the thing that uh, the big the big one of the biggest parts of it is that tour travel when you're just getting started, yep. it's kind of grueling. You're mm -hmm. not in the back of a nice car. You're you're in a, well, a, where a very, you? you know, you're in a either a sprinter van with no <laughs> amenities. Right. Like it's just like a straight up van rental okay. van. It's like very super simple and plain. Yep. And you're, you might be we were driving around throughout Europe in that van. And it's, there was yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with it. It's just a regular yeah. car. But it's yeah. like, you know, OK, it, it okay. was not glamorous. And so okay. basically been one hour on stage yep. and then the other 23 hours of the day you're traveling around you're into yeah, a city yeah. you're barely there long enough to yep. like sit down for a minute have a okay. meal go on okay. stage perform maybe you get to spend an hour or two with people and yep. then you're back on the road again or you know yeah, you sleep yeah, yeah. and you're back on the road so it's 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 kind of grueling that's that's the part that didn't fulfill me but nobody yeah. really wants to hear about that i don't think yeah. right and maybe well, maybe they well, do well you see no here's here's where the, here's here's where the the card I was thinking about here is 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 story hooks, mm -hmm. right? And there's something on the back of the story hooks card. It says, "Well, look, give people stuff they don't expect, or give them an, something that's ironic." In other words, it ain't what it was meant to be. And so you could talk to me about I was you know opening for Jay Z and Eminem in America in Detroit. Then I had a European tour, and straight away I'm expecting glamour, but you're actually going to 
burst that bubble and say, now I know that sounds amazing, but what it means is I, I was driving 23 hours from gig to gig in a sprinter van, eating takeaways, eating fast food. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not as glamorous. So straight away, you've, you, you're playing with our expectations. You're rising our expectations up, and then you're bringing us down to the reality. Yeah, and that's a really good device in story. And there's a moment then when you're, you know, you're in that sprinter van, you're driving, someone else is driving, doesn't matter what it is, but you're, you're pulling over for your third, your third takeaway of the day. Yeah, three meals you're now going to be eating out of plastic. And you just think, you know what? I want to be at home. So that's that's a way of, if you like, of taking, so we've taken the yeah. timeline, but you can find within that timeline these little turning point moments where mm-hmm. something changes, and they're almost always emotional. That's why the emotional dashboard, yeah, is is a really good card for finding those kind of little moments that bring the that bring it to life. And this is like the, my first glimpse of the golden thread was, hey, you know what? I had it. I had it. You looking at it from the outside, it looks like I've got everything. I've got the European tour, but actually inside, it's. Okay, so those little things. So the the those are are so the emotional dashboard and the story hook cards are really good ways to find the beginnings of your golden thread. And then you start to sort of pull the thread and see where it takes you. Okay, so other areas that I thought were really interesting in the in the in the so the so the story listing allows you to kind of come down a timeline. Um, I tell you what was was interesting in story listening because we're talking about you as an expert. An entertainment expert, but also a business expert. Um, okay. As you develop your business with the corporate clients, particularly, okay, where do you think, because you've got lots of different skills here, what sort of mistakes would I have made if I'd been trying to bluff my way in that world? Yeah, in other words, what would I get wrong that you just go automatically get right? Hmm. Well, I guess it's, it's probably interesting to think about how I got into the corporate world and what I decided to lean into at that point. And so I'm not sure exactly, you know, that's, that's a good question, but I'm it, growing a little bit of a mm. tangent over mm. here. So the reason that I ended up getting into corporate and the, the timing of it was the beginnings of social media. Okay. Right. So, and music artists were looked to as, you know, everybody wanted to know how did Justin Bieber just all of a sudden have all these yeah. fans? What was yeah, Lady yeah. Gaga doing at the time okay. that was making her just so explosive online? Got right. It. And so music and music and musicians were just winning on Twitter, on Facebook yep. at the time. And they just had tons of people flocking to what they were doing. And mm. corporate was saying, how do we how can we mirror that? How can we bring some of that energy over to what we're doing? Right. And the, the company that I had was half music management and half marketing company. Yep. And we we realized that the musicians that we had, even though they were doing well, they didn't need a whole half of company to be dedicated to them as marketing resources all the time. And right. so we started to pick up corporate jobs doing uh, the same kind of growth tactics that we did for Got the it. artists Got or it. Right. That's companies. Okay, right? okay, so the and card, so, so there's, there's something interesting here that jumps out of me here, which is, so there's a card in the structure section of the deck the blue the blue cards and this one's called the innovation curve and it's basically about where how okay you're doing something new um and here you're talking about the musicians were the outliers they were the pioneers when it came to social media 10 years ago and then the corporate world back then were interested in finding out how are they doing it and you were perfectly placed it turned out you were perfectly with that perfect mix of skills to be the interpreter to say to them, look, this is how this is how Bieber did it. Maybe you can try the same. I, I remember that kind of era. Actually, I remember all those, those conversations going on. So so that's actually quite an interesting, interesting card to look at the innovation curve, because essentially um, you're in the business of taking people of bridging between the pioneers who are doing something risky, new, exciting, strange and the mainstream. Because the guys in the mainstream, they're actually not that interested in in taking big risks. What they want is something that 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 works. It's been tried and tested, and they can just buy it off the shelf. 
So actually what you're able to do in that situation 10 years ago is to say, okay, here's something strange and pioneering and you don't understand it, but I can bridge from the pioneers to the mainstream where you guys are sitting and I can bring that expertise with me. That's actually really interesting. Okay, do you think that still applies or has the corporate world been playing catch up so effectively do you still have a do you still have a pioneer advantage so i am not actively doing marketing like there was a point where in august of 2021 where i have retired myself from that type of marketing yep. right and it's mainly because of how explosive the dj business has grown Oh. Right. It, it's eclipsed what the marketing agency was doing by a factor of three. Right. And okay. it's really just me. And on okay. the marketing side, I have a team. Right. So basically, I, I set my teammates to work on the clients that we already have. And then they've taken over those accounts. Mm -hmm. And I've pretty much transitioned myself out. Okay. Right. And so okay. That's there, but there, but that story still exists. Yeah. It just exists in a different way. I think okay. when, so when people hire me now, a lot of what I'm doing from that that people don't see is removing risk for them from the equation because yeah, they're yeah. putting so Amazon put me up in front of their this for their very first event back in person from COVID. Yep. I was in person with 300 of you know the top executives of the company and then also being broadcast to over a hundred thousand Amazon employees, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of risk in that. I've got an oh, yeah. open microphone, I'm I've yeah. got all the music in the world that I could be playing. Right. Yep. And, and so in an era of being super inclusive and speaking yeah. in certain ways, right. And like there's a lot that can happen. So, so I'm saying like, people are still looking to me to provide that off the shelf solution mm. that they can okay. just plug in and it works, but it's, it's in a different area. Got it. Okay. Well, that's really interesting. So that, that in that case, that the, the innovation card, the innovation curve card is, yeah, that is really interesting because those people in the mainstream, they are worried about their reputation. Very much they, so. If they, okay, okay. So that does put you in a a place where you can think, okay, I'm still on that curve and I'm still trying to move people. I'm, to, I'm speaking to people in the mainstream, early or late mainstream, and I need to reassure them that I've de-risked this, that right. I'm I'm the safe pair of hands. Okay, um, that's interesting. Um, okay, well, that brings me up with the next card I was going to talk about, and I'm sure uh, this will, will probably come as a surprise to you, but the, the card I think is really, really useful in this kind of setting, both for bridging from pioneer to mainstream, uh, but also in terms, the, so there's a card called social proof, okay, and social proof is essentially, okay, when we don't know what to do, we look at what other people are doing. And okay, so in your instance, your social proof is you're not sure how to approach this. So if you're Amazon, you're not sure how to move people, how to move the needle for your event, how to get real, you know, how to get results in an event. I, you know, we, we're Amazon, we're not MGM. We don't, we don't do, you know, well, I could say Amazon do do entertainment, don't they? Uh, but you know what I mean? They're, they're, they're coming from a corporate world and they don't really know what to do. And so you're in there saying, okay, well, I'm I'm the safe pair of hands here. I'm I'm okay. And you then can say, so for example, and pre, you know, before you worked for the likes of Amazon and Campbell and and all those other big corporate names you mentioned, um, okay, part of that was saying I've opened for Jay Z, Eminem, Dave Chappelle, Beyonce. So that's your social proof, if you like, um, is that I've opened for these big big names and they don't take risks. Yeah, this is not some kind of, this is not some jam session in a in a small open mic club downtown. Yeah, these are big name acts. They do not take risks. Right? They don't book people lightly. So I've I've opened for these guys. These people trust me. Therefore, you can trust me too. Then, of course, as you build up your your roster of corporate clients, again, it's the same thing. These right. people trust me, therefore you can trust me too. So the social proof and the simple sales story, which is another another way of coming at the same, yeah, another way of coming at the same thing. Simple simple sales stories, and basically the the the, the moral of the simple sales story is, someone like you buys from me. Okay, um, and therefore they trust me. 
you can trust me too. But interestingly, in your case, you've also got, uh, you've got the other fantastic version. So the two versions of a simple sales story, one is someone like you buys from me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They trust me, therefore you can trust me too. That's a great story. But equally, you've also got the other one, which is someone you like buys from me. So actually someone who influences you, um, someone whose name you recognize, as in you recognize Beyonce and Jay-Z. Um, you may, you know, whether or not you like Dave Chappelle or not, doesn't matter. You recognize his name. Likewise, exactly. Eminem. Yeah, the, yeah. Recog the recognition factor here is is off the scale right. um, compared to what a lot of people deal with in their business. So, okay, so you've got some great stories there which are effectively saying look here are the people who like me and trust me now so these are all kind of things where i was going through as i was listening to your timeline um i'll tap all these into a dot into a note and send them to you later just so we've, you've got it all down the other one i thought was really interesting as well that kind of jumped out at me and caught my attention there were two um other things the first is a card called secrets and puzzles and in a way you are live you've been living a kind of secret double life Okay, which of the secret double life is, look, by day, he's a marketing strategist, by night, he's a DJ. That's sort of, you know, like Clark Kent, quick change. So that's quite interesting. And that gives you, again, it gives you another kind of hook into the story. It may not be the right one, but it gives you another kind of way into the story to to bring up this kind of, yeah, this idea of a kind of secret double life because it's not many not many people do that kind of thing. And the minute you say to somebody, look, there's this kind of secret identity or this double identity or I'm you know I'm I'm straddling two worlds. Well, straight away you you pique their curiosity. Okay, so that's also got some some story value. Um and the final one which I thought had had kind of story value for me um and it's and it made me think about the the story card which is called the circle of life. And the circle of life is basically, yeah, basically it's it's based on the Lion King, obviously the circle of life, the Elton John song. Um, but it's about that that journey that we all go on from, you know, stupid kids to stupid adolescents to young adults trying stuff out in the big wide world. And sometimes we come full circle and we go back home and we you know, have kids of our own. And obviously you're, you're, most people's perspective changes as they go around that kind of, you know, those circle of, of responsibilities. Now, okay, so all of those come out to me. So your your story is also partly about your, you know, your journey through adventure as a young man into responsibility as an older man. Do you say you're a father as well? Yes. How old are you? How mm -hmm. old is your kid? So she is six now, but the it's key of how old she was when I was in going into COVID and during this transition. Yep. So she was three at that mm, time. Yep. So she was really just transitioning from being kind of a baby yes. to really like walking around and talking and, <laughs> you know, and, and like it, it was a different period of life and that, and right around that time, let's see, I would have been, so I just turned 44. So I just crossed 40 also. Yep. So being just turning 40 and having her really getting to a point where I was like, look, I made this decision a long time ago. And part of the reason was I wanted to be present for my family, for mm -hmm. my, um, I had, I wasn't married yet that, yep. you know, in 2000, like 10 around that time, yes. but, um, I was dating my wife, my, okay. my now wife. And so yes. I, I knew I wanted to be present as a husband. I wanted to be present as a father. And then also yep. my parents aren't getting any younger. So I wanted yeah, to be present yep. as a son. Yep. Right. And Absolutely so that's why right. I didn't want to be on the road all the time, yep. but I realized that, in leading this double life, I was, it was taking up all my time and I, I wasn't present again. So I was like, I yeah. got to make some changes. Okay. Right. And so that was another one of those emotional points where I was like, yeah, look, yeah. I guess it's time to let this DJ and go mm. because although I love it and I'm, I'm, I'm good at it, but mm. you know, I wasn't doing the big concerts at that point. I had become kind of a local DJ yeah. because I wasn't going after the big things. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was like, I guess I got to let this go, you know, mm -hmm. and it'll just be a, a side hobby that maybe I'll do it every once in a while, but I can't be doing it two and three times a week. All right. I just yeah, yeah. can't do it, you know? Yep. So, yeah. a, but then yeah. that was when everything opened back up. And so a, yeah. a big piece around there is like, personally, I was fighting against a lot of the things that I really needed to come into this place where everything could come together. So yep. people kept telling me in my business, you really need to niche down on the mm -hmm. marketing side. Mm -hmm. We were taking 
lots of different clients of any industry. Yep. They yep. were like, you should yep. focus on a specific niche so that you can grow. Right. That's where, yep. you know, and yep. I was like, eh, it's okay. We can serve just about anybody. Right. And then personally, I was like, you know, I'm reading all of these business strategy books and mm -hmm. I just thought I needed another piece of strategy or another piece of knowledge. And I wasn't, I was saying, I don't need that personal development stuff. That's not really what's necessary. <laughs> I'm going to just yeah. lean into this strategy. And then finally, when I get that right strategy, everything will explode and, and yeah, really be, yeah. you know, and then finally what happened was because of COVID, mm -hmm. I remembered that time during 2008, 2009, um, which was right around that tour time. But mm. my, my marketing business at that time was hit by the recession. Yep. And I was holding yep. on for dear life just to keep our doors open. Yep. And I said, if this ever happens again, you know, I saw people who during that very hard time for so many people, people who won during that time, people who find, found out how to make it work for them. And I yeah. said, how can yeah. this be for me? Yep. Right. So well, during COVID, I said, how can this be for me? And then yeah. but that was because of I had started to dig into the mindset stuff. So I'm yep. now very bullish on mindset and all of that kind of stuff because I had to think about things differently. And that was the main difference. Right. Yeah, and yeah. so, yeah, 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 that's another thread that runs through his mindset. Yeah. Listen, I think there's 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 a, I'm going to find a, a way of kind of dividing this into two rough um, blocks. Um, okay. okay. And, and both could be useful to you. But Clearly, then you decide, based on the audience you're aiming at, which block you you lean heaviest heaviest on. And the two kind of blocks really are well. One is the, if you like, is the is the backstory. So your story. Okay, um, and then the other is effectively your customer story or stories. Um, okay, now it may be that you can kind of mix and match between those two elements, or maybe in certain situations, you just want to talk about one. So if you're talking to a customer, you're just going to want to use mostly customer stories, but you realize as the conversation unfolds, you dip into your back, into your story as well, because, because what you're doing basically with all of every time you're telling a story, you're not some neutral objective narrator. Yeah, you're not some kind of you're not just relaying facts. You actually are a character in the story that you're telling. Um, and you understand that. I think instinctively most people get that. Um, so every now and again, you do need to dip into your story to give us something. And primarily you don't, you know, you don't have to give people your life story, but what you need to be able to do is to dip in and give them just enough that they need to trust you and to trust your judgment and to get you so they get where you're coming from that's all they really need so the, the it is a look there's no science to this as to how much backstory is enough backstory because it'll it'll vary from person to person some people are going to be fascinated to go more and more and more into say for example your you know your early career as a dj when you were playing with a lot of big names they want to know a bit about that other people they don't they just need to know that you've played with the big names um and that you know what you're doing. Okay, so it's a fine, it's a it's a tough one, uh, and you you kind of find yourself refining it over time, and also in those conversations you're kind of looking at the other person and to think, well, when are they leaning in and when are they leaning back, and when do I need to shut up about the backstory? Um, okay, but the other story. So within that kind of backstory, um, there are some interesting ingredients. So there's like the the, the double life. Um, there are the kind of, if you like, the those kind of highlights of, you know, entertainment highlights, uh, but also there's sort of strong sense of of the pull of home, yeah, that you do not want to spend your life on the road. And then, of course, what's really interesting about that then is when the pandemic comes along, um, you're kind of, well, you were well placed ten years ago for the beginning of social media, yep, yeah, because of your understanding of how entertainment and music was treating social media. And also kind of well-placed when the pandemic started to thinking, well, actually, you know, I don't want to be the person who goes under during this pandemic. I want to be the person who, who actually shifts into something else. So all of that mm -hmm. is kind of, if you like, it's your your character story. And so there are lots of interesting ingredients there um, that help us to get a grip on who you are mm -hmm. right, and make a connection. Then the other bit that's also interesting, and of course, the, sometimes sometimes entrepreneurs get carried away with that bit of the personal journey story because they're living it. You know, if you're the founder of a company or the you know the prime mover in a 
in an organization, you're living it. Of course, it's your story, but you can get carried away. The other bit that you can guarantee the customer does want to hear is, okay, what are you going to do for me? And what have you done for people like me already? That that sort of whole social proof thing. Um, and yeah, why should I? Why can I trust you? And the trust, as I say, kind of bleeds back into that other side, which is the 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 character story of yourself is is a big part of trust. But the other part of trust is is the people you've worked with already. Um, so the, on the on the customer story side, then we're talking about things like the social proof, uh, things like the simple sales stories. Um, it's particularly important as well in this, and we'll I'll come. We'll, we'll look at your presentation in a minute. But it's particularly important to think about in those simple sales stories and, and social proof. Who else is talking? So you can tell me about your work, and you can tell me you do great work. It's really important. Um, but when a customer of yours says, "Yeah, DJ Graffiti just blew it out of the park. He was so good at what he did." So when someone else tells a story about you, that's even more powerful because I expect you to say you're good. Okay, um, it's why testimonials and case studies and you know personal recommendations are priceless. They're priceless assets. I mean, you know this half your work comes from people recommending you to other people. Say, hey, we worked with this guy. He was really good. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I think also it is interesting to think, you know, to think about you've used the phrase, I like the phrase, about moving the needle. Um, and But I also think your friend was onto something when he talked about moving people. Um, okay. Because moving the needle, the way you, the way you say it, it's like saying Okay, I move the needle from track to track, but I move the needle in terms of yeah, the 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 old audio level needle. What do they call it? I can't remember what they call it. You know, the the level indicator. Yeah, the audio meter. Yeah, but you're moving that. You're yeah, you're moving something measurable. Yes, mm -hmm. to a better place. A good a good yeah. score. So I think so, I like it. Definitely, I think you're. I mean. I know he's right, right? I think maybe if I just rephrase the, and so it's not just move the crowd because that already has a connotation, right? To anybody yeah. who knows hip hop is like yep. MCs move the crowd, right? Yep. But I am moving people, yeah, right? And it's absolutely. more than I'm moving the needle. That's that's kind yeah. of like a key point. It's like, I think I'm forcing something to try and make it be move the needle. Cause then it's like, well, where, how do you move the needle with these events that you're doing? And yeah. then I don't really have any, you know, financial yeah. impact necessarily that i can okay. show but, okay well that's yeah. okay that's interesting so you so that's interesting so you've become kind of quite attached to a phrase and now you're not sure you can back it up it's it's there it's like i think you have to see the presentation and you mm, can tell me right. whether it's there or okay. whether it's tenuous okay but, okay i'll uh, tell you what it's good that's a good segue let's, let's let me just give you the right to um hold on a second let me just give you the okay to share um okay. a second uh, 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 hold on Okay. We'll make co-host. Make co-host. There we go. So I'm gonna make you co-host. Right. Um and there we then... go. And I have it here. Okay. So, so I'm gonna go that's... ahead and try to share this presentation and let me know when you can see that there it is. The problem is that I got my notes here, so I'm gonna try to wing it without the notes. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, okay. We'll see. We'll see what I can really do here. All okay. right. So, but I'm not going to give the entire presentation because it, it would be a little too long. And I, that's okay. one of the key pieces is I'm trying to figure out what I can cut out, Got it. Okay. what doesn't need to be in here. But, okay. you know, and here, I actually just need this first sentence though. Let's see mm -hmm. if, let's see if can I get out of here? I can't get out of here. All right. But it starts out with something like the year is 2009 and I was on the road to becoming one of the most famous hip hop DJs in the world. All right. And let's see. Ah, there we go. Sorry. The uh, mouse doesn't really want to work. That's all right. There we go. So I've worked with all of these different artists and there's too much animation in here. I got to get rid of the animation. I don't really want it, but I don't know how to get rid of it yet. OK, but uh, I worked with all these different artists, which we talked about. Right. And so yep. we'll go past those. And then here's a magazine where I was in, in, it's a Paris magazine. It was comes out of France. It's a print magazine and it's one of the, the most popular hip hop magazine in Paris. 
And if you can see the people on this page, at the top left, you have Kanye West, the bottom left, you have Jay-Z, and then there's me at the top right. Right. And so uh -huh. like, I really was making my mark on the world, even if you've never heard of me, I promise <laughs> that I was right. But I was living a double life. All right. Now here is me on the left. That's Martin Smith, the marketing strategist and business growth strategist. And on the right, that's DJ Graffiti. All right. And so I was Martin Smith by day and DJ Graffiti by night. And then comes the pandemic. I was trying to figure out how to bring those two pieces together. And only because of COVID-19, the pandemic, did I realize that I could bring my two worlds together because I started DJing and I was playing events on Facebook. And these were the comments that I got from people who were joining me that were fans of mine, but they were joining in on these events. And they started saying, this was literally everything I needed. Much love. Hello from Indiana. I needed this. It's been a struggle. Thank you for this. And then I needed this tonight. All right. And so after this went on for quite a while, some of my clients that were in person DJ clients started asking, can you do those types of events for us? And I'm like, yeah, of course I can do that for you. And that led to what we're calling the DJ graffiti experience. Now I've DJed for brands throughout the world and, and audiences worldwide. I wake up sometimes at five o'clock in the morning to DJ for audiences in India, right? And there's people in you know, South Africa and Poland and all throughout, you know, North America and all around the world, literally at the very same time. And I'm able to do that from home. And that changed my life, right? Because I could now bring together what I do as a public speaker, as a marketing strategist, I'm working with clients to help achieve their goals through entertainment events. All right. And that became the DJ Graffiti Experience. And it's been explosive, I've had to retire from my marketing agency because this has gone so well, but I really have never been able to put a finger on what is it that makes this so different? I know it's different than anything else I've experienced opening up for all those big name artists, but I wasn't really able to tell why. So I leaned into doing some research to figure this out. These are just a handful of the happy clients that I've had a chance to work with. And there's been over 40 corporations that I've worked with so far and 83 and counting different events that I've done for those clients. And I realized that there were actually five different themes that kept coming up. When I said I needed to do some research, I started grabbing screenshots to see during the course of these events, when people are in chat, what are they see, saying and what are the common themes that are running through this? One of them is, I needed this. I just kept hearing that. I needed this. I needed this. I needed this. This is so needed, right? And another one of those key themes is... I'm feeling recharged. This is giving me life. I haven't felt this energized in a while. You know, this is setting the mood. This is putting enthusiasm into my evening. I'm recharged. The third theme was that people started to tell me that they were getting results, business results, right? I'm usually drained, but now I can repeat this day all over again. This is variation in my workflow. My CRM is getting crushed today, right? I'm fired up for the day. This is picking me up and this is a fan fantastic way to finish my work day, right? And so those comments came in about, you know, this is the perfect work break and I'm ready to make these millions and I'm gonna take this energy to my client call, right? And then beyond that, there were two more people started to tell me how often they wanted it to happen. We need this every day. Can we have this every day? Can you DJ my life? Right. <laughs> you can kind of see all of the comments that came in it said DJ in the bottom left, DJ graffiti needs a subscription service. You log in every morning to kick off your day. Can this be weekly? Right. And then finally, everybody was saying, not only do we want you to do this for us on a regular basis, can you just come on and be a part of our staff? Can you be a resident DJ? Can we have DJ graffiti? Well, so like, if we don't have a job family for DJ and residents, we should. Can we get job graffiti a job here? Make DJ graffiti part of our community team. DJ graffiti for chief beats officer, right? Can DJ graffiti just be our motivational speaker? I think we need to make this a daily routine. And then all of these are blurred out because I didn't get permission from my clients and I don't want to put people out there, but I want you to show these are real comments, mm -hmm. right? And I added so many of them on the page. So you don't think that there's just one or two of them, right? Yeah, yeah. There are many even beyond this. I've got folders and folders of these that I could just keep going and going, but there is actually side effects. Now, the, the only side effect that happened is that when the events end, everybody's saying, like, I'm going to be depressed now. Like, tomorrow morning is going to be sad if I wake up yep. and there's no DJ graffiti. <laughs> I don't know how I can keep going. I need more of this, right? And so, but the, pro the, the answer to that, I think I've come up with the answer, is that 
those clients who love me and are getting these types of results, I don't just want to do one-off events where I pop up every now and again. We can actually create something where we come in and do quarterly tune-up events for your staff, right? And even this happened because other people told me they wanted it to happen, right? I had three different clients say, can we do quarterly events? And I'm like, oh, maybe I should start offering that, right? <laughs> and in addition to that, there were a couple other things that happened in the course of the business that made let me know that it was time for a change right but um i'm going to i'm not going to leave that out because <laughs> it's, it's going too deep and we don't need that right here but this is the problem i started to realize why all of the comments that i got you would think so many more of them would be about this music is great i'm loving this party but the comments weren't so much about the the music and i mean and people did say i love this this is great they said those things but more even more what stood out to me was the fact that people said i need this and it was helpful for them to bring them through what they were dealing with right and the problem here was that people are stressed out people are disengaged and this was a an escape for them in the middle of their day they were able to escape they were able to recharge and they could come back refreshed <laughs> Right. And so there's a, that thread is running through things. And so not only are they stressed out, but then also just the business world has stress. And I think this bottom right stat is super important. Forty percent of employees who suffer from stress have talked to their employer about it, which means the other 60 percent aren't saying anything. And they need you to, to know what they're going through and do something about it, even though they'll never even tell you about it. Right. And so the job absenteeism is caused by stress. It's like we need to be mediating this stress actively mediating the stress. And it turns out that the power of music does that. If we just look and go to this study at the bottom right, a study found music does a better job at combating stress than anti-anxiety medication, right? And the way they tested this is they measured people's cortisol levels before and after, and they played feel good music for one group and they gave the other group anti-anxiety medication and found out that the music did a better job of lowering their stress levels measurably, right? And so, and then finally, the events that I've been doing, I didn't realize it at the time, but it's like a perfect way to re-engage audiences or to engage people. What I do is I read the chat. So first of all, I ask people to, to speak. I listen to what they're saying, right? I take it in, I acknowledge them, and then I take requests live during the course of this event and we create this together. So the fact that you sit down, listen to somebody, hear what they're saying, show that you hear them and then act upon it. That's how you engage people. And I was doing that and had no idea I was doing it until I came and did all of this research. So the music, the strength of the music itself, the engagement of the audience and the fact that, you know, people are saying this is just filling me up and it's de-stressing me, right? That was the perfect storm that's created what I'm doing right now. And that's why people love it so much that my clients have said that, um, I have a cult following. I have multiple clients that have actually said that they have Slack emojis for me where whenever people find me anywhere on the internet, the, the, the employees go in there and they just hit the DJ Graffiti emoji and then everybody will come and find me online, right? And I have one client that after our very first event, they sent me their entire year's worth of events and said, book these all on your calendar, lock these all in. We want you for every event that we're doing. Right. So I was like, I haven't had this type of fanfare, even though people love my DJ events. This is different. Right. Yeah. And the, the change that happened finally here is that when I got back to in-person events, I really missed that two way interaction with the audience and I wasn't able to have that. So I created an app that allows people to request songs and they log in and it's connected to Spotify. They put their name in. And so they request songs and then everybody in the audience can upvote the songs on a list via the app and we have this on a big screen so everybody can see what the top most voted songs are. And so now I'm able to shout them out by name. I'm able to take their requests and play songs and we're able to crowdsource the events just like we did in the virtual standpoint. We are able to do that in person, all right? And so that brings us to where I would love for you to be a part of this and have this for your, you know, your internal, this is the part I'm just throwing this up yeah, on yeah. the top of my yeah, head. Yeah. Good, I transitioned into the packages yep. and that's it. So yep. this okay. is what I've put together, and I'm okay. wondering, is there enough of my story in here? Is there enough of the, you know, well, you the audiences okay. and so on and so forth? Okay, brilliant. Listen, thank you so much for, for running that through, through me. And so what I'm going to give you my sort of first impressions and a couple of ideas. Um, first of all, it, it feels about right, the division between backstory and customer story. feels about right to me there. Um, you know, you've got, you have got 
uh, look, we, we, we pay attention disproportionately to famous people, right? We can't help it. You know, even if you're a, the account executive for a multinational or an HR person, it doesn't matter. We kind of pay attention to famous people. Um, so you've got some, you know, so to have that within your backstory is a, a real blessing. And, uh, you know, it's fantastically powerful. So it feels about right. Um, the, the, there's a, there's a little bit that I'm I'm still and the and the double you you funny enough you use the double life um idea which we talked about before I shot before I saw the presentation so you're already playing with that um there's a little bit and I don't know if this matters or not because I think as you go into the customer story it probably matters less but there's something which is which is which is underplayed at the moment we're well, not playing with at the moment in the backstory which is your if you like it's your marketing um expertise so there's something in that moment of 10 years ago where you're dealing with musicians and with corporate clients and you're taking what the musicians are doing on social media into the corporate world. And there's something interesting, I think, that I think is quite an interesting element of the backstory, whether you feel there's room for it or not, because it kind of talks up your, it talks up your business expertise. It's okay. So that's something I think is, is okay. Maybe there's, Maybe there's something in there. You could also, you know, you could also um, have, so even if it's, you go through the slides about your kind of career, the double life slide, which is really nice. Um, and maybe it's something that comes just just briefly after that, um, you know, where we go, look, remember remember Justin Bieber when he was cute. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and he came from nowhere and no one knew how he'd done all these these amazing millions of fans and views. We knew because we were working with musicians. We knew how he did it. Yeah. And we in my, in my marketing team, we took that expertise into our corporate clients. So there's something, you know, so so you can play with look, the double life is not as crazy as it sounds. Yeah. I had this double okay. life, but it's not as crazy as it sounds because actually there's a there's a there's a connection here. Um okay, that's the thing. Um, that's the only thing I would add to the backstory because I think everything else you've got there is really, really good. The pandemic, the, you, what you've got there is an interesting kind of, look, the pandemic shook us all up. You know, it shook up all of our working patterns and our life patterns. And you put little feelers out, these little steps into something new and it worked. And so you thought, right, I'm going to try bigger. And that's how the business emerges. So that's quite a nice story because that's, you know, a lot of us have got that. Okay, pardon me. So that's all good. And I say the only thing I would... The only thing I think you could add in the backstory is that idea of that double life paid off. It wasn't just a, you know, there, there was crossover. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Because um, it's partly what the subtext of that part of the story is. If you book me for your business, I know what you need at a business level. I'm not just an entertainer. Okay, so I think that's that's got maybe that's maybe important. Builds up your credibility. Okay, now you come into the the second half or two thirds really, and that division, by the way, one third, two thirds. I think feels about right. One third on backstory, two thirds on the now story, which is what am I going to give you now? Okay, okay. So a few thoughts about that. Um, I'm a big lover of the kind of rule of threes of the idea that when you're going <laughs> to yeah when you're going to talk about something, yeah. you should try and give us three benefits. Or three right. three things you've you know three either three problems you're solving, you know three is more than you know if your if your wife sends you down the shops to buy three things, yeah you'll come back with three things because you can remember three things. If she asks mm -hmm. you to buy five, you'll write a list. Right. Okay. So there's yes. working. Yeah. So so, so for, which ones do I get rid of? Okay, that's well, the part. That's well, the well, point. What, I, what you do is you do some smashing together. So you take okay. I, you take I needed this and recharge. And that becomes point one. Yep. And that becomes, I needed this. But you're basically taking those two ideas and putting them into one. Um, you take the, um, I don't think you can, I don't, I think withdrawal you could live without because actually what you really want to build with is I want this man to DJ my life. You want that frequency. And yep. So, so I think the, the, I needed this recharge. I get, I get, I, I'm fired up by it. The tangible results one, and I want this. I want more. I want this to be frequent. Okay. okay. Yep. Those. So my first reaction is, wow, this is amazing. Second, I'm now charged up. Third, I want this. I want this every month. 
every quarter because yeah. that's what's actually leading you to your business model that you're selling. Okay, now we're coming to the thing, the only thing I think is missing here in this presentation, um, and it's part of the social proof we were talking about before. Mm -hmm. You've got some social proof here. So in the, you were saying, okay, during the pandemic, I started experimenting with this. That's your prototype, okay? And when you've got a prototype, that's part of the proof that what you've got works. So I started playing with this, and we built it into this. Okay, fantastic. So that's good social proof. You've got your 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 crowd. The, sort of the, the you've got responses from people in the crowd. Yep, those those messages. They're all great as well. That's also social proof. The bit of social proof you're missing, I think, is the person who's booked you. Right. The the man or woman who's spending the money. Yes. Okay. So I guess that's, it depends. So like the, the people that I'm actually going after with this yep. are those happy clients, right? Yes. So they are, are the people who have mm -hmm. booked me and they're only yep. taking this meeting because they've been so impacted by it Got that it. they're willing to consider. Got so it. I can still give them that, but I mean, they are the proof on, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. but after that, I will be going after, you know, new yeah, audiences yeah. Yeah, yeah. of which so, then I'd want to give them three, probably three people saying this yep. is what happened from working yep. with each other. So you see, you're back on the, you're back on the innovation curve in a way. Okay. So if you're on the back of the, on the back of the card, you're thinking, okay, so the people I'm talking to in this, the DJ graffiti experience, the people who you've had success with so far, they are your pioneers. They came with you at the very early stages. Okay. Of the of your of uh, your first your package was the DJ experience. Okay, now you're trying to well you're trying to do two things. You're trying to kind of yeah you're trying to upsell them into something bigger, but also you're right. You're going to once you've finished dealing with them, getting repeat business from them, you're going to move out to other people who haven't. Yeah, so in both cases, I think, I think that, I think in both cases, client effectively a client testimonial is going to be useful for you because okay. um, I mean I, I I I think I can't think of any times when when a client testimonial is damaging to you because they're just good they're just you know they're just incredible things to have um, so in this case you might think okay so what I need to do is, is I need to think about um, like you could write a list of your kind of top five um, clients who you know truly value what you do Right. And you know, because you've had conversations with them, and not just that kind of immediate aftermath of, you know, ten minutes after you finish the 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 set, they're buzzing. Okay, that's fantastic, great, but they maybe have a conversation with you a week later. And the ones who tell you, our team have got an emoji on Slack. Yes, they've got a DJ graffiti emoji, and they keep yeah. So the people who are telling you that level of that level of love for what you do. They are the people who you need to go back to, I think. It would be interesting to see what happens. Go back to them and say, okay, um, I've got – this is what I'm planning to do. Um, and I – this is the package. So what I what – I, in, in other words, what you're looking for from them is partly the emotional yeah, benefit of working with you, but also that thing about moving the needle. So mm – -hmm. You know, do they think it's value for money? Yeah. Okay. okay. So it's a slightly hard and hard nosed kind of. So what you're getting at the moment is a lot of love from that presentation mm -hmm. of people love what you do. Well, in a way, of course they do because they're getting it for free. <laughs> yeah? yeah. Who would who wouldn't love a free DJ session with one of the you know with with somebody with your track record and your experience? Okay. So you, that's easy. It, it, you know, it's not easy. You have to be good, but that's easier. You need to go, I think, the next level, which is someone who has paid good money for you to come in and, and, and make this moment happen for their team. Mm -hmm. And and better still, they came back and did it again. Right. Yeah, and I have I have many of those too. I just didn't right. didn't put those in, okay. you know, thinking that I didn't necessarily need them. But you make a great point as to why I should add them in. So I think, yeah, I, th I think <clears> it's <throat> I think it is. Um, I think that's the, the only thing that's missing is the if you like the paying customer, the person who's putting up their money and seeing a benefit in return, benefit in kind. Um, and okay, what what I think the yeah, I think the 
um because that in a way you can talk about the you can talk about the problem so there's studies done on anxiety at work remote work and being particularly stressful we all know that only 40 percent of people talk to their bosses about it music is a powerful anti-anxiety experience well you can tell us all of those things but how much better if somebody who's effectively somebody in amazon is telling us look we're we're aware of the stress our staff are under remote working we're trying to lift people's mood and motivation the dj graffiti experience brought such positive feedback that we've actually put him on our calendar to yes so the client who said oh, here's my calendar for the year i i need you to book every slot yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that client you need to go back to them and i think and say look i'd love to reference you first you know first of all are you happy for me to do that yeah um and if so so i know you've asked me to 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 do all these events for you this year can you just tell me why tell me what you think your staff get out of it and then just write it down whatever they say just write it down yep and then what i do with with clients sometimes because people are busy you know you're trying to do the work for them not trying to give them homework um i write it down turn it into a short quote 25 35 words and then i send it back to them and say look this is what i'd like to use are you okay with that and nine times out of ten people say yeah yeah of course yeah and then off you go that's your so that's the only piece i think in the in the presentation that that is missing um and obviously as you said toward the end you can get into the nuts and bolts of well what's the package how much time and i think in the nuts and bolts section the togapa is that the right way to pronounce it yes that yeah, is to, yep so so, so togapa comes into that kind of nuts and bolts um section mm -hmm. uh but yeah but I think I think let's say just to kind of to, to summarize, I think you've got overall you've got the balance right between your story and your customer story. Um, I think that I would I would think so. I think the 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 cards. If I was just going to pick out three cards for you to to sort of to focus on to tweak this a little bit this presentation, I would pick out the innovation curve because you're you're going to need to move people from pioneers into mainstream. Um, so it's worth having a look at the innovation curve. Certainly take a look at social proof and take a look at simple sales story and think about that the the missing element, which is I need somebody in this presentation who is a paying customer who talks about the value of, of what they got for their money. Okay. Um, other than that, I think it's fantastic. Really, really good. One other thing I would say, obviously, <laughs> uh, just on a technical note, Presentation is very good, by the way. So for anybody watching this, 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 that's a very good example of how to do a presentation with lots of images and very little text, right? The, the images are really simple. We listen to you while you're talking if you're playing out images. Once you start putting lots of detail in text, I'm kind of listening to you, but I'm reading. And while I'm reading, I'm not really listening. So be aware, be aware when you put those, those slides you've got about the, the problem the anxiety they're quite text heavy mm -hmm. um, so just think about look maybe pick out one for text just one piece of text one mm -hmm. statistic yeah the biggest killer stat you've got and you can talk about the others otherwise the danger is we're reading your slides instead of listening to you excellent okay i can't think of anything else anything else you want to ask about the uh, the story tactics um, well, first of all, thank you so much for putting this together. I mean, just the idea that you've collected this and all of the, I, I don't think I've ever seen a website that has, that you can go down that many rabbit holes and get so much information out there. So thank you for pouring your life into, into creating this. It is impactful and just helping people to get their story out there. I mean, I think, um, you know, when I think of legendary, it's because those legends or stories that are being told, right? And you helping people to kind of curate their stories and, yeah. and tell them, it just means so much. So I want to say thank you, first of all. Let me take a look at it because I had some uh, quick notes here and I just mm. want to make sure if we got across everything. Yep. Um, oh, okay. This this will be my last piece here. So mm. you, you pointed to something that I didn't do as much of that I, that I should have, but... Mm. When it comes to my tiers, the entry level tier is just somebody signing on for quarterly events. Yep. 
right? The second level in there is, is we get towards probably more of the in-person events added mm -hmm. with the quarterly mm -hmm. events. Mm -hmm. And maybe, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the Tagapa app is in there. Mm -hmm. Then the third level is when it's more of a business partnership. Mm -hmm. It's really like what other areas can we apply this mm -hmm. to? And they need to have an understanding of what I could bring to the table from a business strategy standpoint. Because mm -hmm. what I found is the events are kind of a Trojan horse often yeah, 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 right yeah. what you think you get can be different than what you really get okay. right and so a lot of times uh just just out there storm one example mm. right i've done events for <clears throat> most of my events for internal staffs of companies mm. Mm. but when they do an event for their prospects it's like come on we're going to celebrate you but then we're mm. able to kind of like drop some of those gins in because i'm enjoy you know public speaking and mm. just talking off the cuff mm. about things mm. i'm actually able to put business thoughts and ideas in there and, and ask people well why don't you go over here and fill out this form so you can get this xyz yeah, and write yeah. and get people to actually do yeah, it yeah, yeah. So, so here's the thing what i suggest for that you've got three so as, maybe as part of the presentation you've got three levels of offer mm -hmm. for each level so you've got your quarterly event you've got your online you've got your mix of online and face-to-face -face, and then finally you've got your kind of real DJ graffiti experience with where where Martin Smith turns up too, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. So for the first two, you need a case study for each one of a paying customer. So here's a paying customer who's who like who has bought in at this level. Here's what they get for here's what they say about what they get for their money. Here's a customer who's bought in at this level, and here's what she says about yeah. Now, here's why I think there's another level. And maybe this is the place when you're selling this third level, okay, this is the place where you could say, you know, remember I told you about this double life I was leading? Well, back in 2000 and 2009, we were looking at Justin Bieber developing these, you know, so that's maybe where you tell that part of the story about, actually, you know what? It wasn't just a day job and a night job. This was good business. And in this moment, we were seeing first what, what musicians and artists and entertainers were doing, but the business world was copying. And that's what I can bring to you if we go in really deep. And then you get DJ Graffiti and you get Martin Smith. Mm -hmm. And so another piece that ties right into that, and I think that's what this would be a great place for it, mm. is... Just the idea that honestly, only two of the 40 companies that I've worked with since 2020 uh, did I have on my roster as there were clients prior yeah. to the pandemic, mm, right? Yeah. So imagine what would happen <laughs> if yeah, you had, yeah, yeah. imagine any salesperson <laughs> generated mm. 38 client yeah, relationships yeah, yeah. Yep, with yep. those types of companies, what would that do for your business, right? And yeah, that's yeah. what I was able to do. And it's largely because of the marketing that yeah. was put out there. You know, it's yeah, like, yeah. you don't you don't just step in and start doing business yeah. with all those companies overnight, right? I, so I think you're absolutely right. And I think it's a nice way, if you think of that, it's th those three steps. Mm -hmm. Yep. The, the quarterly, the mix of face-to-face, -face, and then finally the full, yeah, the full relationship, business relationship. Um, in a way, I like that as a, as a final, because even if I don't buy that, yeah, it validates the other two. It adds, it's almost like putting, look, if you go into a television showroom um, and there's a $6,000 TV mm -hmm. sitting on the shelf, massive thing next to a $4,000 TV, well, right. suddenly the $4,000 TV looks like a bargain. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so anchoring. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's anchoring. anchoring. Yep. So, mm -hmm. so you, but also there's something interesting there about um, differentiating yourself from any possible competitor. So, and a n other DJ who's out there at the moment could do a quarterly online event. They could do face to face DJing. Yes, yep. But mm -hmm. no other DJ out there at the moment. Yes, in that that crazy Venn diagram of between DJ and marketing specialist, the overlap. Yeah, there's an overlap that's you. And yep. you know, so I think that's really interesting to, to have, take it in those three levels, and then in that third level. You just need to talk either about your kind of experience 10 years ago, spotting how musicians were outliers for corporate behavior, or talking about a kind of partnership benefit with a, with a client right now. Mm -hmm. So I, no, I, I, but, but I think the, 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 the kind of the Bieber 10 years ago, well, 15 years ago now, that's quite nice because everyone remembers that period as being like the wild west of social media. 
Right. Um, so you know, you can say, well, actually, we were we were there, um, and here's what I learned, and so you know, I can bring this into. I've been, yeah. But you're also right. Going from two clients to forty clients in the space of two years is also a sign of good marketing now. Man, this has been super impactful. Thank you so much, Steve. Martin, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you for sharing your story with me. I love, uh, yeah, I love the, uh, I love the idea of, of, um, yeah, moving the needle. I think I'm going to take that away with me. I think okay, because I always worry about. I'll be honest with you. I kind of worry about my my business as storytelling, you know, advisor. How am I moving the needle for people? Where's their tangible benefit? And our people go away feeling kind of confident about their story. That's great, but it's very hard to put a number on it mm -hmm. and say, you know, our sales have increased 12.5% since. Uh, okay. So, yeah, moving the needle is a, is a very good good measure. Moving people, moving the crowd as well. Don't underestimate yeah. how, you know, how, how important that is. Brilliant. Martin, I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Steve.